Help support Name Explain by liking this video, leaving a comment, and subscribing to the channel. Greece, a nation of huge importance not just to Europe but to pretty much the entirety of the Western world. Many argue that the civilizations of ancient Greek were the cradle of Western civilization thanks to their ideas, developments in democracy, their love of plays and placing importance on culture, the stories of their gods and heroes, and their scientific discoveries. Without what happened in Greece over 2000 years ago, it could be argued that the world would be a seriously different place right now, at least in the part of this sphere that we have dubbed the West anyway. The name Greece itself seems to come great who was the son of Zeus, and he was supposedly the namesake for the Grecian tribe of ancient Greeks. The Grecians are believed to be the first Greeks to colonize Italy. They were primarily in the coastal areas of southern Italy. These Greeks were most likely the first Greeks Latin speakers ever came across, and this led to the Greeks being named after the Grecians in Latin, calling the people the Gracchi and the homelands of Glacia, which over time evolved into the English name Greece. And if that sounded familiar at all, that's because I just committed plagiarism of myself from a video I've already made about the name of Greece which you may want to check out. Yet Greece isn't actually called Greece, which might sound weird as this is the name the English speaking world knows it by. It's the nation's short name in English, but the nation's official name is the Hellenic Republic, which derives from the nation's Greek name of Hellas, meaning something along the lines of the land of sun and stone. Like I mentioned, we have a whole video about it on the channel. Though something I've actually wanted to talk about for a while is this fact that pretty much every country actually has two names, their short name and their official name. On the whole, there usually isn't much of a difference in these names, like how Chile is the short name and its official name is the Republic of Chile. Yet the difference between the short name of Greece and the official name of the Hellenic Republic is rather striking, so I thought here would be a good time to talk about this fact. I've actually debated making a whole video about how countries actually have two names, but I don't know how interesting that would be. Let me know if you'd like to see it though. However, in modern times, Greece seems to be mostly known as a tourist hotspot, where many from around the world come to enjoy its history, culture and of course sunny beaches and many beaches this nation has. And that is because a huge amount of this nation isn't simply one mass of land, or other islands that span across the waters that surround it. There aren't many nations on planet Earth that have a similar geography to Greece. It's definitely a nation of two halves. The mainland of the country covers a land area of over 130,000 kilometers squared, and is on the southernmost tip of the Balkans of Europe, and where the nation's capital of Athens is. However, off the coast of Greece you'll find many islands with different cultures, geographic features, and of course, names. It's these islands that we're interested in today. How many islands make up the Greek islands, however? Well, it varies depending on your definition of what exactly an island is. One definition, however, gives a total of over 6,000 islands and islets that make up this part of the country. That's a huge amount, however, like I said, some of these are pretty tiny. It's estimated that of this 6,000, only around 227 are inhabited by humans. It's safe to say that we won't be covering all 6,000 of these islands. That would take way too long. Long. So I'm looking into some of the more popular islands and some of the others that just have interesting names. Though please let me know about the islands I've missed out on down in the comments below. Yet before we look into the names of some of these islands I can't help but ask myself why are these islands even here? As I mentioned there really aren't many other countries made up of so many relatively small islands like we have here in Greece. What was going on in the waters of Greece to allow these islands to be created in the first place? The sea that most of the Greek islands reside in is called the Aegean Sea, a name we'll come back to later. And this sea, unlike the rest of the Mediterranean, is rather shallow and its seabed isn't made up of oceanic crust like a lot of other waters, but rather continental crust, which is the kind of crust that land is made up of. It's the continental crust found below the Aegean Sea that has allowed mountains to rise up beneath the water, in turn creating the islands that make up so much of Greece. It's safe to say that Greece would be a seriously different country if the Aegean Sea had an oceanic crust instead of a continental crust. And yeah, now I've said crust too much and it sounds weird. But also, why do these islands belong to Greece? Imagine if they were all independent nations instead. I think the answer to this is simply because the Greeks got to them first. I can't imagine that many of these islands, especially the smaller ones, were inhabited at all before the ancient Greeks got to them. I also read how mainland Greece was not very good for farming, so sailors took to the seas to find lands that could be farmed, which I imagine would have been these very islands we are talking about today. And as you will see, these islands are scattered all across Greece, with the northernmost major 
Asia island being the island of Phasos, with the southernmost Greek island being Gavdos, an island that's just below Crete, which is the biggest of all the Greek islands, at over 8,000 square kilometers in size. While the title of the smallest Greek island seems to be hard to define, some say that the smallest habited island is Levitha, which is just four square miles inside, whose only permanent residents are a family of four, or possibly the tiny island of Ro, which is off the coast of Turkey, whose only inhabitant was an old Greek lady who became known as the Lady of Ro, who every morning would raise a Greek flag on the island until her death in 1982. And of course, these islands need to be on a sea. However, they aren't just on one sea. I've already mentioned the Aegean Sea where most of the islands are situated. However, there's also islands on another sea to the west of Greece, the Ionian Sea. Despite the fact that I made a video all about the names of seas, I kind of forgot about these two. So let's cover them here. It seems that there are quite a few ideas as to how the name of the Aegean Sea came to be. Apparently the word Aegean in Greek means wavy coast, so it makes sense to name a sea after this, but apparently the sea's name also has roots in Greek mythology, with the most popular myth being that it was named after Aegean, an important character of Greek mythology and father of Theseus, the legendary founder of Athens. The Ionian Sea, however, gets its name from the Ionian people, a group of Greeks who resided in Ionia. It's thought that this name may come from the Sanskrit Yoni, which means womb, as they were a goddess worshipping people. The Greek islands are also put together into certain groups too, based on their location and similar cultures across them. And yes, for our sake, these have names too. We have the Northeastern Aegean Islands and the Ionian Islands, which are in the Northeast of the Aegean Sea and the Ionian Sea, respectively. We just covered where the names Aegean and Ionian came from, so we didn't really need to look into them again. Luckily, however, not all these groups of islands are so boringly named. The Cyclades is the name for a group of islands somewhere in the middle of the Aegean Sea. It seems that these are the most stereotypically Greek islands. It's where you find white houses on hillsides with blue domes above them. The name Cyclades means circular islands in English, as the name refers to how the islands of the Cyclades form a circle around the island of Delos, which is a sacred island and of much importance in Greek history. In Greek mythology, the island is believed to be the birthplace of Apollo, the god of light. The Dodecanese island group in the southeast of the Aegean Sea and closer to Turkey than mainland Greece. This name is the Latin form of the Greek name Dodecanessa, which comes from the Greek Dodeca meaning 12 and Nisos meaning island. So this name means the 12 islands. However, there are actually more than 12 islands in this group of islands. The Sporides are a group of islands in the northwest of the Aegean Sea, and this name comes from quite an obvious answer. If you look at these islands, you may notice they're quite far apart from each other. The name means that those scattered and of course this links closely with another word we still use, sporadic, which I think is pretty nifty. Finally, we have the Saronic Islands, which in turn are named after the Saronic Gulf. This gulf is apparently named after the mythical King Saron, which I don't think has any relation to a certain other Saron. However, this doesn't mean that every Greek island is part of one of these groups. In an example, we have Crete, which is an island so big it could be a region into itself. In regards to the actual name Crete, I've seen a couple ideas for its name origin, when I found out that the name comes from Cross, who was an important person of Greek mythology. However, I've also heard that the name means things like mighty and strong, and it makes sense that the biggest of the Greek islands would have a name meaning powerful. And that's just one of the many islands of Greece, so let's look in no particular order at some more Greek islands and how their names came to be. And as we look through the names of these islands, you may notice some similarities between them. From my research, it seems that these islands tend to be named after one of three things, either a geographic feature, their size or shape, or named after a figure of Greek mythology. In example of the island of Icaria, named after Icarus and his ill-fated flight. The legend goes that his body washed up on this island and in turn the island was named after him. Something interesting about the Greek islands is it seems that you have a variety of names. One island I know is Xanti is actually named Zakynthos. This name too comes from a figure of Greek history, Zakynthos, who was the son of the king of Troy. When the Trojan expedition came to an end, Zakynthos and his followers fled to this island, setting it up as their home and eventually the island was named after him. Another large island of Greece is Euboea. In fact, you may at first think this island is part of the mainland. I sure did, but it is in fact an island, just one very close to their land. The name actually translates to an English rich in cattle as there are many cows on this island. The island of Corfu is known as Kakria in Greek and this name comes from a nymph of the same name. I won't go into too much detail but her and Poseidon got to know each other quite well on this island. Island, hence what is named after her. The English name Corfu however comes from the corruption of another word which means peak and this name seems to come from the Byzantines who set up a castle on the peak of this island. However Corfu and the story of the nymph and Poseidon actually led 
lent itself to the naming of the nearby island of Paxos. This derives from the word passion and it's the passionate love Poseidon had for the nymph that made him strike off a piece of Corfu so she could have an island for herself, with that island being Paxos. And Poseidon comes into play one last time with the naming of another Greek island, Chios. This name comes from one of his daughter's names, Kioni. She was born on the island while it was snowing there and according to the legend before her birth the island was a desert but the snow that accompanied her birth made the land fertile. The island of Kos has its name come from the word Kofos with this name meaning cave and relating to the many caves that the island of Kos has on it. The name of the island of Ithaca on the other hand comes from the Greek word Iphis meaning straight and long as the island is somewhat straight and long. One of the most popular Greek islands is Santorini and this name was actually given to it by crusaders who came to the island and named after a chapel on the island, that chapel being the chapel of Saint Irene. And when you say Saint Irene aloud you can understand how this became Santorini. However this island in Greek is actually known as Phila and this name comes from the name of the ancient king Phalus. The island of Kefalonia is named after the island's first ruler, Kephalus. Mykonos is too named after a hero of Greek legend called Mykonos. While the island of Samos's name is thought to come from the word for hill as there are many hills on the island. The island of Skiathos has many trees, though its name doesn't come from a word for trees, instead it comes from a word which means shade, as these trees made a lot of shade. The name of the island of Lefkada was given to it by Homer, no not that one. It comes from the Greek Lefkoth meaning white, as it's believed that the soul here was once white. Lesbos's name apparently comes from ancient Greek words meaning forested or woody due to the trees on the island. But it's also interesting to note that Lesbos lent its name for the word lesbian, which we've talked about previously in our sexualities video. And as for my personal favourite Greek island, Rhodes, one idea is that this name comes from the Phoenician word for snakes, since before it was truly habited it's thought the island was overrun with them. The islands of Greece were suggested by Dale Ritchie and thanks to their suggestion they will now be honoured as name explains patron saint of the islands of Greece. Do you have a good idea for somewhere that's name could be covered in a name explained video? If so then please consider donating on Patreon. Just one dollar a month helps keep the channel running and earns you a weekly chance to suggest somewhere to be turned into a video and you too could be a name explain patreon saint Thank you so much to all my patrons who support Name Explain on a monthly basis. Name Explain really does depend on small monthly donations from fans like you to help keep the channel running. Just a small amount of $2 a month helps in a huge way, grants you patron exclusive Name Explain extras, and gets your name here with all these awesome people. Thank you.